This is the 2023 Toyota GR Corolla Circuit Edition. It is the most expensive Corolla ever made. It's also the fastest Corolla ever. I am a big fan of hatchbacks. In fact, I owned a 2018 Ford Focus RS limited edition back in 2018. And to this day, I regret selling that car. It's probably the only car that I regret selling at this point. There's nothing I can do about this. So I thought maybe this would be the perfect replacement. I love hatchbacks. Why? They have just enough horsepower. They're fuel efficient. They're well priced in some cases. And you can also get an all-wheel drive like this one. It's amazing for winter time. Maybe, just maybe, they offer enough space. Now, let's start talking about the Circuit Edition. What is it? What does it offer? And can you actually get one? The first thing you need to know is that this is, of course, limited edition for the 2023 model. They're apparently going to make about 1,600 units. This one is unit 181 because, of course, Toyota, similar to the Supra, edits a little plaque on the side of the door panel where it says the number and this is a limited edition so that you know that the chances of you actually getting one is almost impossible but also to let you know that if you do find one you're not going to get it at msrp exterior wise what does the circuit edition offer first of all it's very similar to what you see with the core edition the base model here's a few things first of all at the top we have the Vents. Now, these are not non-functional. They're actually functional, and you can see it when you pop the hood underneath the hood, which, by the way, is extremely light, that they are functional to let more air go into the engine. And, and they've made sure that the rain does not go into the engine. It's a very functional design, yes, very protective of the engine. On the outside, of course, it gives it a very aggressive look. You can notice that from far away. And one thing I noticed, you don't get that with the core edition, which is the base model. Moving on to the front side, this of course has the GR badge on the right side. So you know this is not just a base Corolla, the massive grille in the front, very extended. And of course the wide body style from the fenders, which again, give it a very aggressive look. If you move on to the side, you have the GR badge and of course the air vents at the same time, which is typical to sports cars nowadays, nothing crazy. No carbon fiber around this area, just basic plastic around it. The next thing I want to talk about is the wheels because this comes with lightweight wheels and Toyota says that the circuit edition is for performance and lightweight version of the GR Corolla although on their website it still shows the same weight as the core so I'm not sure what they mean with the lightweight portion of it. These are of course 18 inch with the Michelin uh, tires performance Michelin tires in this case the front one are the 18 235. In terms of the brakes, we got the two-piece rotor, four piston calipers in front, paid in, in red with the GR badge. So again, you know that this is a GR Corolla. Moving on to the rear end, of course, you notice the wide body style in this car. And most importantly, we got the beautiful rims in the back. The rear side, we have 235s, 40s as well, of course, with the Pilot Super with Sport Pilot 4. And if you look at the side over here, we have the GR4 stamp so that you know this is a all wheel drive version of the Corolla. The next thing I wanna talk about is the wide body around this area over here, the way they have extended all the way through to make it a bit more performance looking like and more aggressive. In fact, 
this does not look very much like a Corolla. The other day I was just parked right beside one and this looked like nothing like the base Corolla. The GR Corolla Circuit Edition comes with the carbon roof, again, for a light weight. At the same time, to give it a more aggressive look and, of course, performance upgrades, it has a proper spoiler at the top, which I do like because it's not too big, not too small, just perfect. Fits the car exactly what it's supposed to look like, in my opinion. It gives it an aggressive look, yet sporty, but at the same time, it does have some functionality for the airflow. If you're driving behind a GR Corolla, the first thing you're going to notice, of course, the three exhaust tips in the back. We got this massive thing in the center and one on each side. It's kind of like 100 horsepower per cylinder and one cylinder per exhaust tip. Now, don't get too excited because it doesn't really sound that great, especially if you don't turn off the traction control. If you do turn off the traction control, it actually sounds a lot better. Take a listen. If you buy one, in my opinion, the first thing you should do is maybe upgrade the exhaust because this doesn't sound as nearly as good as the Focus RS, in my opinion. Even under loads, it's still very muffled and it feels more like air kind of thing. It doesn't really sound that great. One thing I don't like about the exterior design is the rear end, specifically the side profile. It feels like this was an afterthought. The designers didn't think about this part until the end. Like, for example, look at the side fender over here. It feels like it's just attached to the body. In comparison to the front end, where it's fully one piece, actual part here, the metal, and then we have this plastic part that feels like it was just attached to match the front end and to just give it a more aggressive look. The only difference is that this part here that is connected to the bumper, it comes as a whole piece. But then if you look at the one on the actual door and the pillar on this side over here, it looks like it was just thought at the last minute. It doesn't look that great and it looks like it was done just by a normal body shop. Now, what do I think about the overall design? I think it looks exactly what a performance hatchback should look like in comparison to the Golf R, for example, which looks like a GTI like 90% of the time, except the rear end because of the quad exhaust system. I'd say Toyota has absolutely killed it. They've done a fantastic job overall, minus the little things at the back. In comparison to the Focus RS, this is actually very similar because the ST version looked very different to the Focus RS. We had the spoiler at the back, a bit more aggressive, the single exhaust tip in the back, which of course sounded a lot better than the GR Corolla. Then you look at to the side profile, a bit more aggressive, the front end, the rear end, as we spoke about it. And then you got the hood, the carbon fiber at the top. In my opinion, I give them a 9 out of 10, minus the things that I mentioned in the back. But overall, I think this is exactly what a hatchback, a performance hatchback should look like. This looks nothing like a standard Corolla, in my opinion. Okay, jumping onto the inside. And the first thing you notice, the upgrades. For example, the steering wheel is a bit of different design. We got the GR badge underneath, very grippy. One of the models, I believe, comes with the Alcantara one or suede uh, steering, this in just normal leather, but you get all the options that you need. And most importantly, we have this beautiful shifter here, which is pretty long, I have to say. But having said that, one thing I do love is the reverse option. You pull that and you can go into reverse. Unlike other manual transmissions, which basically you have to figure out, or the Supra, for example, which I'm not a big fan of the six-speed manual. This, on the other hand, is fantastic. We'll talk about that when we go for a test drive, the seats, very performance-like. I love them, they're comfortable, they're not powered, 
The seats are manually adjustable, of course. You can do that pretty easy and faster in terms of comparison to the automatic option. The same thing for the passenger side. They're kind of like bucket style with a suede part in the sensor, leather around it, the GR badge at the top, and you have the brackets over there if you want to put the harness for the track day, and this thing will do the job just fine. They're comfortable for me, I'm 6'2". The start button, of course, says GR, then we have a digital cluster, the digital screen here, which it is touch screen, is not the biggest available from Toyota, but it does the job just fine. Of course, this doesn't have a sunroof because we got the carbon fiber roof at the top where there's a wireless charging pad and so on. Overall, the design is nice, exactly how it should look like for a hatchback. The seats are comfortable and everything else is where it should be. Now, let's get into the details. Let's talk about first the cluster. There's a few options that you can play with. For example, you can get into the main menu. You can hold the OK button on the steering wheel and you can change some of the settings here. Now, you also have extra settings, your message, if there's any issue with the car, is going to show up right there. And the adaptive cruise control, because this does come with. This is only for the gear, so it will tell you what gear you're in. I usually keep it here, so that way I know what gear I am. I mostly do know what gear I'm in, but in this case, just as a backup. And then on the left side, you have the boost portion. That just gives you an idea what your boost is. And then on the right side, we have the driving system. So in this case, the GR4 is at 60-40, but you can change that with the scroll button in the center. So in this case, we can go into 30-70, and if you press, it goes in track mode, which would be about 50-50 power delivery. It's quite impressive what this little thing can do, like 60-40, 30-70. I usually do this for launches. If I want to launch the car, this seems to work really well for me, um, but you can also do the 60-40. I don't suggest, I don't know why, it just doesn't want to launch as hard as 3070. There's so much grip in this car. We'll talk about that when we go for a test drive. Now, one thing I love about it is that when you press the traction button, it says they're experts, especially if you put it in sport mode. There you go. So now it says, guess what? If you turn off traction, that means that you are an expert. So good luck with that. There's different driving modes. You got your normal, you got your eco, there is sport, and you can also do custom. Now in custom, you can customize it to whatever you want it to be. If you want uh, into like suspension to be a little bit stiffer and so on. This doesn't come with the adaptive suspension system. It comes mostly with the coil springs, which are basically designed for sporty rides. But we'll talk about that as well when we go for a test drive. So that's pretty much what you need to know in terms of the cluster. Just a few things added here and there just to give it a more performance look like. The layout is nice. I love it. It looks very different, of course, and very sporty like. On the side over here, you have this button called IMT. So it's Intelligent Manual Transmission. And what that basically does is that it turns on the rev matching. This is designed by Toyota, which is also offered in the Supra. Over here, we have two buttons. One is for the heated seats for the driver's side, and the other one over here is for the passenger. So you get two options, two levels, low and high. There's also a wireless charging pad that I have my phone there, but it seems like to never work with my phone. So I don't even bother charging my phone. I just put on the USB cable. In the center over here, we have two cup holders just for you to use. There's no actual armrest, but you have this area over here if you want to put your phone or your keys or anything that wouldn't slide or fly completely. Then we we'll want to this area over here. There's this scroll button for the drivetrain, which puts it into 3070 and 6040. Or if you press that, it goes into track mode. Another thing to notice is the actual shift knob itself. You see this part over here matches the paint color for the car. And if you buy the new version, which has the fire blue, this thing will be painted in blue as well. The touchscreen infotainment display is very familiar, not totally different. It does have a backup camera, which is great, easy to use, easy to see, uh, and it gives you all these lines here so that you don't crash into any objects. This also has wireless Apple CarPlay, which is nice. Um, I actually use this quite a lot, easy to connect. It's pretty quick, love that. It also has its own options. You can go into the vehicle size. One thing I wish it did have here, it's more like a performance pages like some cars have. This doesn't seem to show anything in here. There's just vehicle customization, uh, but nothing else. Like I wish it just had maybe sort of like a graphic to show a lot of the details mostly in here. You do get them into the cluster, but this one is very basic. But hey, 
you got built-in uh, maps in case if you don't want to connect your phone and just some standard settings nothing crazy uh, there's vehicle alert as well and there's also a voice control in case if you want to use that one thing i really appreciate from toyota is this a standard manual handbrake like this to me should be in every performance vehicle i hate automatic handbrakes even the supra doesn't have this that just tells you that this is a proper toyota Under the hood, the 2023 GR Corolla uses a 1.6 liter, three cylinders. Makes about 300 horsepower, under 275, 276 pound foot of torque. It uses a six speed manual transmission. And as we saw previously, you can adjust that drivetrain to whatever you want 30, 70, 40, 60, 40 or right now I have it in track mode, so it's 50-50. Um, it's insane what they can achieve with just a three-cylinder. This is kind of like the Audi RS3 version, where you got a three-cylinder and a five-cylinder kind of thing. This is a demonstration that Toyota can actually make a performance car. And one thing we want to appreciate as well is the fact that we're still getting a hatchback with a six-speed manual transmission that is for the drivers, for people like us that care about driving, having fun, yet a bit of a daily car as well, because that can do that too. It has Torsen limited slip differential, tuned suspension system. We got McPherson double wishbone in the back. The springs are of course tuned for more track experience. But I have to say, in comparison to the Focus RS, this thing is a treat. This is very soft ride, whether you have it in sport mode or normal mode, the difference is not massive. In fact, it doesn't have adjustable coilovers. Like in comparison to, for example, the Focus RS, which has adjusted, which does have adjusting uh, suspension system. You have rev matching, which is nice. You can turn it off, you can turn it on. You can see the turbo spooling over here. I love how it shows on this side to where the power is going. And we have a Golf R passing by. I think it's a Golf R or maybe a GTI. It looked like a Golf R. Hard to tell. This, on the other hand, I got a, a few thumbs up today. I've actually gotten quite a lot of thumbs up on this car, which is shocking for a Corolla. You don't expect that to happen in a Corolla. This car, it's so grippy around corners that if you are someone that spends a lot of time around the track, this could be the one. Now, one thing I can tell you is that Toyota says this, that this makes 300 horsepower. It doesn't actually feel like 300 horsepower. And another thing to mention is the fact that the launch control is very finicky. It doesn't have an actual design launch control but if you wanted to launch it it's a bit finicky so here's my advice if you own one because we did do a drag race the best way is put the drivetrain the all-wheel drive into 730 and when you're launching it don't slam or dump the clutch right away because you're gonna burn the clutch on this thing no doubt the best way is ease in with the clutch and then release. Don't just do a straight dump and then you're gonna burn the clutch and you can easily do with this thing. That's the problem with a manual transmission all wheel drive because there's so much grip that the traction management unit, it, it's suffering. Like you're dumping the clutch way too hard and it doesn't like that and you're gonna come out and you're gonna smear you're gonna smell the burnt onions. I love the steering, very direct. The brakes are fantastic. One thing I could change on the outside is the exhaust. This thing has no sound whatsoever. Only when it's under load and parked and with traction off. 
otherwise in comparison to the focus rs this thing sounds like it doesn't even have an exhaust it actually sounds like a normal corolla in many ways um the next thing i would change in this is the 19 inch wheels uh installed the 18 inch make this thing look like a skateboard not the biggest fan of this car the way it looks with those tiny little wheels because the car is so wide and so beefy that the tires make it look like literally a skateboard like a massive uh, plate in the center and then the little tiny wheels underneath what you do here is a lot of that spooling from uh, the uh, blow-off valve which it's kind of funny because it reminds me of those souped up Honda Civics and um, <laughs> It just doesn't sound that great. It needs desperately an exhaust. Price-wise, let's talk about that because that's very important. Well, if you're lucky enough to pay MSRP, you won the lottery. Right now, the core in Canada, Auto Trader, I checked online and other websites, it's selling for $62,000 Canadian, which would be about 54 US as of today. The circuit edition in Canada starts at about $57,000. Now, you'll never pay that unless your order comes through because if you find it online, you're going to pay easily about $75,000 Canadian. Do I think it's worth it? No. Seventy-five? dollars Sorry, can't. It's just way too much money for this. It's fun. It's great. But that's way overpriced in my books. $57,000 Canadian? It's still a hard one to bite, in my opinion. Like, don't get me wrong. The Focus RS that made more horsepower, that was, in my opinion, better in terms of performance, I paid $58,000 back in 2018. Now, that's not a long time ago. And the base model Focus RS was about $50,000 or so. Now, the limited edition was 500 units made, uh, less than what the... Corolla uh, GR circuit is going to be offered. The units is about fifteen to sixteen hundred all uh, fifteen to hundred uh, fifteen to sixteen hundred units, and uh, it, it's just the Focus RS had a bit more, well, let's just say spice to it. And in comparison to this, the Corolla GR it's getting there, but it's not quite there. That's the way I see this. Um, the Focus RS was an absolute beast, whether it's the manual transmission, the drift mode that you had. This does have that uh, 730 that you can probably play around, but it's still very much like an all-wheel drive. I've tried to do that, and it's you can still see the tires in the front spinning. The Focus RS could send almost all the power to the rear wheels. It was a bit more advanced, for the, in my opinion, during the time it came out, was probably the best hatchback with the six-speed manual transmission you could buy. It was faster than most, most of its competitors, whether it was the Civic Type R or the Golf R at that time. I regret selling that car so much to this day. Every time I see one on the road, I break my neck just looking, staring, and just following all the way through. I think they did a fantastic job with that car, minus the... Well, the suspension setup was a bit rough in that car. Um, this, on the other hand, has a much better suspension ride. Uh, softer and just more friendly, daily friendly, in my opinion. The RS, I was like doing this the entire time. Uh, in here, not so much, even in sport mode. I like the car. I love the fact that Toyota is finally making something like this because the GR a Yaris is offered in Europe and Europeans have had that luck for a while, and they might actually have the luck of getting a Focus RS as well in the future. We don't know about North America, but I love the fact that Toyota is offering something like this, a hatchback performance for North America. And if you're lucky enough to get the base model at MSRP, you got yourself a deal. This, on the other hand, for 57, yes, you got the carbon fiber roof, I yes you got the spoiler in the back yes you get the fact that it's a limited edition all the fun stuff 57 is a bit hard to buy and that's almost impossible to get to like most of the time this is going to go for sale on in canada easily about 70 grand 72 because dealers are being a little bit cheeky in my opinion and not fair
but I appreciate this car. For, for what it is, I appreciate it. Maybe because I love hot hatchbacks. 